Thank you, Gabby, for the kind introduction. I uh, realize uh, I'm one of the last two people standing between you and lunch, so we'll try to be brief. Um, Daniel Webster, um, who is a graduate of Dartmouth College, uh, made his early name uh, by arguing a case before the Supreme Court. And what had happened at his alma mater was uh, there was a rogue president who appointed his own board and wanted to move separately from uh, the parent college. And uh, there was Dartmouth University for a while at Dartmouth College. This thing went all the way up to the Supreme Court. And Daniel Webster's famous words uh, before the Supreme Court were, yes, it's a small place, uh, but those of us who know it love it dearly. So Alfred uh, has that same uh, small feel to it. And when you go to events like this, especially if it's in fields like ceramics, glass, engineering, art, uh, there's, there are deep ties and there are deep connections and deep points of pride. Institutions are ultimately known by their graduates and what their graduates do. And you've, um, we wouldn't be here without this graduate. So we want to publicly recognize, as he's already been recognized, David Pye, for having the idea for the year of glass globally that the United Nations approved. To Kathleen Richardson, our convening chair, uh, not so many of us would be here without her corralling, cajoling, and otherwise organizing. So Kathleen's a member of our board of trustees and a distinguished three-time graduate. Don McPherson. Uh, two-time graduate, actually now three-time, he was an honorary degree recipient in 2018, who was our commencement speaker, and I think you got a flavor. He came to us to study art. Uh, the program that he found in a, a guide to colleges and universities didn't exist when he showed up, but uh, the art uh, teacher that he interacted with had uh, the good wisdom to say, look, but we have a great engineering program in glass, so go check them out, and uh, his ability to tackle uh, difficult problems, uh, I think reflects both that love of art and the love of engineering. John Edmund, another trustee, um, he uh, went to NC State after Alfred University. We just had dinner with him on Monday night down in Durham. His first big claim to fame was a company that he started, a Cree, uh, that uh, focused on LED lighting. They were going to sell off the power units, about five unit, the power unit about five years ago. Uh, the U.S. government stepped in. They were worried about uh, sensitive information. To John and his company's good fortune, they blocked that sale. They ended up selling off the lighting portion. Uh, now they're uh, building a billion-dollar plant, the largest of its kind in the world in Marcy, New York. Um, they produce silicon carbide wafer mm -hmm. and chips that uh, are used to power electric vehicles. Stock's gone from $25 to about $110 a share over that time period. Uh, but uh, when you go to meet John, very hands-on, uh, I'll go out to Wayland nearby, and he'll be on the roof fixing the roof. Uh, so very much a tinker. Uh, the company just went from NASDAQ to the New York Stock Exchange last fall um, and retitled Wolf Speed. Cheryl Blanchard, another trustee. Uh, we have a graduation speaker this year, uh, Dr. Robert Langer, who's one of 12 institute professors at MIT. Uh, he's gonna be joining us um, courtesy of Cheryl Blanchard. Uh, he sat on Cheryl's former board. Uh, Cheryl's the head of publicly traded Annika Therapeutics. Uh, Robert Langer, uh, as many of you probably know, is the most cited engineer of all time fourth most cited scientist anywhere in the world. that started over 40 companies. Uh, his biggest claim, though, to fame is he co-founded Moderna, and he still hasn't sold any shares, so he's done pretty well. Uh, by happy coincidence, he has a sister who's a graduate of ours, and uh, his sister will be joining us for that occasion. Uh, Cheryl, when she was with us, combined dance and engineering. The first faculty member she went to said, engineers don't dance. <laughs> but of course, figured out a way to make that happen, and she's had a wonderful career combining the elements of the performing arts with her expertise in engineering. 
Chris Heckel, who you saw, plays a critical role as in this conference, but more broadly at uh, Corning Incorporated, a member of our board of trustees. Uh, Gabby Gaustad, with her kind introduction from Hales from a small town in Pennsylvania, uh, ended up after us getting a PhD from MIT, uh, then played a critical role in sustainability programs for RIT for a decade, and in the last two and a half years, we've had the good fortune to have her back as our dean. A big player in glass recycling has already secured major grants uh, in glass recycling from the state of New York, but is playing now a critical role too at the federal level. Uh, we're about to receive, we believe, a $5 million grant uh, from the Armed Services. Uh, this coming month, uh, hypersonics, unfortunately, has become a real critical area due to geopolitical tensions, and there's some core expertise in our engineering units. So we're looking for to play a, an important role in that space thanks to Gabby's leadership. Another trustee uh, came to us, uh, had a critical mentor, Rune Varshneya. Uh, he, he is now the uh, CTO, Executive Vice President for Dow Chemical. John Maurer. You saw a presentation, we saw a presentation earlier, now at Penn State, was one of the co-developers of Gorilla Glass several generations while he worked for Corning Incorporated. Uh, just joined the National Academy of Engineering, uh, following in Cheryl Blanchard's footsteps. And we have artists as well. Uh, Pearl Dick, you've probably seen her featured on NBC Nightly News. Uh, she works with glass as therapy. Individuals in the Chicagoland area that have had challenges due to gang violence lost family members, uh, had, uh, had injuries themselves, and using art in that important way. Hong Wei Li is bicontinental, spends half his time in Alfred in the year, half his time in Beijing. <laughs> Has two sons that in their names both have Alfred connections. <coughs> art has been displayed around the world, uh, Victoria Albert Museum, Art Institute of Chicago, a Gardner Museum in the Boston area, Louvre, uh, just an amazing combination, if you haven't seen it, of glass and metal. <clears throat> My go-to person uh, for holidays or gift giving is Elizabeth <laughs> Lyons, who came to us to study sculpture, ended up falling in love with glass. Uh, she's the owner and founder of Morefire Glass Studio, uh, accessible by the website, uh, does some amazing large-scale chandeliers from shakes in the mid for shakes in the Mideast to Barney's in New York, but worth checking out. Now, if you had to characterize, uh, so those are the alums. What's the secret sauce that makes them possible? And what are we looking to build on to help further realize our promise as a university? <coughs> Just like Wendell Weeks uh, started off by saying, look, here are the key properties of glass and then tied it in the end to a product that's very tangible and visible to all of us. I would argue there are three key elements of Alfred University that make <coughs> that magic possible. Uh, three M's. Uh, first is the mix of programs that you can switch, like Don McPherson did. You can come for art, switch to engineering. Uh, we met with an alum recently in Florida who was failing in history, switched to engineering, and became a straight-A student. <laughs> Doesn't often happen, it usually works in reverse. <laughs> but that's where his passion was and ended up running a major division for Corning Incorporated. You can combine stuff. Uh, Narcissus, uh, the presentation last night amply demonstrates that, uh, the art and the science. We're looking at students uh, across the country, more and more diversification of their educational portfolio offerings. Because the world's getting more dynamic. So, Diversity has significant advantages. It also gives you more tools in your tool chest. We're especially well armed in the small valley to have this mix of programs that you can add in a year an MBA. You can combine the art and science expertise in a field like glass. You can deepen uh, your understanding of glass. We have the only glass PhD program in the country, and that's uh, another thing courtesy of David Pye's leadership uh, at Alfred University. So. We have had close to 40 graduates, and there are who's who of folks that have decided to pursue that mix of programming. Second thing is mentorship. It's a small place, so it's hard to hide. I grew up mainly in Columbus, Ohio, where the key educational institution is the Ohio State University, and you gotta be careful, God forbid, you don't capitalize the, the, 
T. <laughs> but during classes, at class, high school classmates, you end up in classes with 600, 800 people. Nobody knows if you're not there, if you're falling asleep. Uh, we had a trustee recently say, look, I was really struggling in engineering. And then uh, Dean McMahon at the time saw me on the street and said, look, uh, Bob, you don't look okay. <laughs> and um, come to my office. And uh, Bob said, I went to his office and uh, Bob ended up, or the, the Dean McMahon said, look, you're probably gonna fail this course because this teacher is a real hard ass. <laughs> but there's another teacher in the summer, you can make it up, has a different teaching style, you're likely to bond with that person earned an A in that course, ended up blossoming, ended up being very successful in investment management. So smaller places allow you, and just sitting at different meals, uh, having Don McPherson or others talk about how much Arun Varshneya uh, or David Pai, how closely they got to work with those mentors. I'm an economist because I, had, I was thinking of leaving college first year, wasn't too happy, I felt out of place then ended up with a wonderful mentor in economics in a required course. One or two people like that can change the trajectory of your life significantly. That's a key element in a small place like Alfred University. And then third place, so we're very much tinkers, a maker culture, roll up your sleeves. I've been part of institutions where it's more theory-based, deductive. Uh, the secret to our place, well, the third end is willingness, it's an inductive approach. Theory is one thing, but then you got a test, uh, just like Don talked about, to how does this actually work uh, to discover how do you refine the theory going forward. You may wonder what this collection's about, it's from <laughs> Spider-Man to the Louvre to Tesla, but it, it amply, I think, illustrates the potency of having a mix. Um, we'll have a life trustee back in about a week and a half barely made it out of our engineering program. 2.2, the GPA, self-admitted. Uh, he partied too much, <laughs> took him an extended period of time. Mentor stuck with him. Uh, but what he learned in his engineering program is how to remake companies that were struggling. And his biggest claim to fame was taking Marvel Comics when Stan Lee was bankrupt, repositioning it, and turning it into Marvel Entertainment and selling it to Disney for 4.8 billion. So he's helping uh, Don McPherson right now uh, with his company. Uh, he'll never retire. Uh, he's uh, approaching 80, but just constantly energetic. You never want to drink coffee before you meet with him. <laughs> but uh, that uh, mix and the mentoring play key roles for him. The Tesla, uh, longstanding head of glass, uh, an alum of ours, uh, in charge of the truck line. And the key elements were the art and design and the engineering. The truck had to look cool, the glass had to look cool, and, but also had to be structurally sound. Another alum who uh, works for an architectural firm, they design high-end stuff like the Pyramid of the Louvre. It's gotta look cool, and it's gotta be structurally sound. But there's potency in that combination. Their firm also designed the glass uh, in New York City at the Apple Store on Fifth Avenue, uh, where the thing had to look cool uh, before they revised it recently and also had to be structurally sound. And we continue to tinker along these lines. Uh, this is one of our uh, upcoming graduates uh, related to Bill LaCourse. Uh, he's combined an engineering degree, uh, expertise in glass with an MBA, already started his own company. So how do you bring things to market like Steve Jobs did or Wendell Weeks's company, the importance of delivering. And he's developed a particularly durable form of glass that can be used in these straws, and that can be engraved and used to market firms, and it's uh, sanitary. So in the age of COVID, uh, this has even more traction to it. So bottom line, if there are any ways we can help you uh, connect with talent, uh, either through current graduates, uh, about to be graduates like Aiden, uh, past graduates, uh, just shoot me an email. Our Latin motto is Fiat Lux, uh, let there be light. So I wish you a fiat vitreous, which is let there be glass and light. <laughs> and then one request, because a lot of you can, are connected in academic circles. Uh, when you think about what's made the inventions that have been talked about possible, uh, a liberal society, uh, the ability to explore, uh, the ability to put forward hypotheses and test. Uh, we just ask uh, to, uh, before I get there, before I get there, uh, 
in terms of the maker culture, uh, this is a little known slide from Apollo 11. But you probably saw the US flag, you didn't see the Alfred University flag. <laughs> uh, but uh, David Pye played a seminal role in this, and we're grateful to uh, analyzing lunar rocks. Uh, was persistent with NASA, because we can analyze uh, the glass there. Uh, can it tell us whether it was uh, more formed by meteor impact or whether it was formed by volcanic activity? The evidence, uh, when the samples were shared, pointed toward uh, Meteor, meteorite impact. So that uh, set in motion a conference, a journal, the hiring of faculty. Again, we probably wouldn't have been here had some of that uh, important steps not been set in motion. So that's the, on the flag is the motto, the Lux and the Fiat Vitreous. And the request is something we're currently engaged with, uh, right now with 22 different colleges. Um, it started in upstate New York, it's really happened the last two and a half weeks. Uh, we're, for the first time in history, going to jointly award honorary degrees uh, in absentia to President Zelensky uh, in honor of the citizens of the Ukraine. Uh, each of us are going to have a common citation. Uh, usually, when honorary degrees, they're individual. And if you've ever been part of an honorary degree process, it moves like molasses. <laughs> so the fact that um, this has happened in two and a half weeks. It's no small feat. But we think geopolitically is a lot is at stake. Um, the values of a liberal society and the role universities, colleges play in promoting those values. So we've got another 20 schools that are in process that haven't gone public yet. But through your contacts, if you have folks at other institutions that would like to lend your voice, uh, lend the shoulder, lend their voice, lend the shoulders to the wheel, uh, please let me know. So thanks for the opportunity to be with you. Congratulations.